Hey guys, this is part one of a review of uh, polynomials. This lesson will focus on how to expand binomials using Pascal's triangle. So first of all, this is how you make Pascal's triangle. You start off with a small triangle of ones like this. One, one, one. A little pyramid of ones. Um, after that, you start adding. So you take these two numbers, add them together, that makes two. You put that right down here in the middle. And then you finish off this row with more ones. Always put ones on the end. Then uh, you pick each pair and you add them again. So one and two, that makes three. Two plus one, three again. And finish it off with add. That's four. This is six. This is four finish it off with ones and again add that's five this is ten another ten another five and then the ones okay let's go one more level add so this is six this is fifteen this is twenty this is fifteen this is again six and then the ones Okay, and you could keep going like this indefinitely. Now, the uh, significance of this is uh, when you have a binomial raised to some power and you want to expand it as a polynomial in standard form, that polynomial is going to have coefficients and it turns out that these rows would be the coefficients of the polynomials that you would get if you expanded these binomials. Now, um, each row corresponds to a degree. So if I took um, some binomial, I'm just going to call it x plus y, keep it general. Um, this first row would be uh, the coefficient if you did x plus y to the 0 power. All right, which makes sense because anything to the 0 power is just 1. Um, but then it goes on from there. Okay, so the next row down, that would be binomial to the first power binomial squared all right if I took a whoops if I took a binomial to the third power those would be the coefficients these would be the coefficients of a binomial to the fourth power these will be the coefficients of a binomial raised to the fifth power and these will be the coefficients of a binomial raised to the sixth power okay so here's how we use this to make our polynomials pretty easily so we've got a binomial raised to the third power third degree so we glance at our triangle and we see um, that these would be the coefficients of a third degree polynomial. So um, 1, 3, 3, 1. So let's just copy those coefficients down. Okay, so spread them out. So I've got 1, 3, 3, 1. Okay, and they all start off positive. Okay, so we start from the coefficients. After that, what we do is um, we use the terms of the binomial. So we'll take the first term, 2x, and it's on the left, so think uh, we'll start with that on the left. Put it in parentheses, please. And the degree is 3, so we'll start off with degree 3. And then what we'll do is we'll go down a degree for each term going to the right. So I'll, I'll do 2x to the third, and then 2x to the second power, and then just 2x, because that would be 2x to the 1 power. And then nothing here, because this would be like having 2x to the 0 power, which is just 1. So we don't need to write it at all. All right, and then we jump over and we look at the next uh, term. Okay, so the next term is this 4. So it's on the right, so think to yourself, okay, let's start on the right. So we'll start off with 4, okay, and we'll do 4 to the third power again, 
And then now we're going to slide to the left, decreasing the degree each time. So uh, we'll do 4 squared, and then 4 to the 1 power. And then the last one doesn't get any 4s, because that would be 4 to the 0 power. All right, so we've got this. Now, after this, what you want to do is um, first do all your exponents, the 3, the 2, the 2, the 3. Do the powers first. So if I do that, um, here's what I'm looking at. Let me just copy down uh, the coefficients again. So I'm going to have my, my 1, my 3, my 3, and my 1. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to go, I'm going to stick to my colors. So I'm going to do all the blue things, uh, doing the exponents, and then I'll go back and do the green. So it's first the blue. If I do 2x to the third power, please understand I have to cube the 2 and the x. All right, so this is going to become 8x to the third power. All right, it cubed them both. Similarly, this is going to become 4x squared because I squared both of these. And this doesn't have any power, so I can just write it down. Okay, so that's it for the blue. Now I'm going to go back and do the green stuff. All right, 4 to the third power is 64. Okay, 4 squared is 16. And then I just have 4 to the 1 power. Okay, so now I've taken care of all these exponents. So uh, now I will do all my multiplication. And uh, really, this is going to be the final answer. So I'm going to switch it up. So 1 times 8x to the third power, of course, is just 8x to the third power. Okay, now here I've got <clears throat> 3 times 4 times 4. So that's 12 times 4. Um, so that's going to be 48. So I've got 48, and then I've got my x squared right there. Okay, and then over here, um, I've got 3 times 2 times 16. All right, so that's 6 times 16. Or I could use the calculator. 3 times 2 times 16. Okay, so that's 96. All right, so I'm going to have 96. And then I've just got my x. Okay, and over here, of course, I've just got 1 times 64 is just 64. So that's it. This would be uh, the polynomial in expanded form standard form. All right, let's do that one more time. We're looking at problem number two. Now, um, with the example that I just gave you, I encourage you to pause the video and try to do this one by yourself. Hopefully you did that. Okay, so we're looking at um, a degree of four on this one. So that tells us to look at the degree four row right here. So we're talking about 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Okay, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And they all start off positive. Okay, so once again, we will start with the term on the left. So that's x. And so I'm going to start with uh, it's degree 4. So I'm going to start on the left with x to the fourth power. And then I'm going to decrease the degree as I go. So then I'll do x to the third power, x squared, x, and then x to the zero power. Don't put any. Then we'll jump over and look at the second term, um, the 5. Well, negative 5. Treat this as a negative 5. So I'm going to start on the right-hand side this time with that negative 5. And you should put it in parentheses um, because of the negative sign. And uh, again, we'll start with the degree of 4. And now we will decrease that degree as we go to the left this time. So we will do negative 5 to the third power. And then negative 5 squared and then negative 5 
to the first power. And then the last term won't get any because that would be zero power. Um, okay, now let's go through and deal with any exponents that we need to do. And it's really just the green ones that we have to um, evaluate, uh, square them, cue them, for fourth power. So um, I always like to start by just recopying all my uh, coefficients. So I'm going to have my, there's my 1, my 4, my 6, my 4, and my 1. Um, now the blue stuff, since it's just a variable and a power, that's not going to change. So I'm just going to recopy that as well. Okay, that's not changing. Now, so the green part, here's where I evaluate the powers. So um, I guess it doesn't matter the order that I go. So, so this one, I've just got the negative 5 um, with no power. So I'm just going to keep that for now. All right, but negative 5 squared, that's positive 25. Positive 25. Okay, now be careful when you do this. Um, Obviously, you should not need a calculator to know what negative 5 squared is uh, because you should know you should know that um, negative 5 squared you know means negative 5 times negative 5. okay And you know that a negative times negative is a positive. So you should know that negative 5 squared is positive 25. But um, some students insist on using a calculator. And so what they'll do is they'll type in negative 5 squared like this. And then they'll get negative 25, uh, which is wrong. And they will blindly uh, write down a negative 25 right now. So the best thing is to use your brain and know that if you square something, it's always going to be positive. Um, but if you insist on using your calculator, then you have to use it properly. And uh, you have to use parentheses. So if you do negative 5 squared with the parentheses, then of course it will give you the positive 25 that you're looking for. All right. The reason why it didn't work when you did negative 5 squared like this is because of the order of operations. Uh, your calculator is only squaring the 5. Okay. It's not including the negative sign. It's just squaring the 5 because exponents come before multiplication and then it's sticking the negative sign on there. Okay, um, anyway, positive 25. Now, negative 5 cubed is a negative 125. All right, notice odd powers leave you negative. Okay, and I'll just show it really fast. Negative 5 to the third power, negative 125. Okay, odd powers a negative will stay negative. Um, and then we have negative 4 to the fourth power. Uh, again, an even power is going to make this a positive answer. So just make sure you're getting a positive result anytime you do an even power. So, um, so here I go. So negative 5 to the fourth power. Positive 625. Okay, so when you have a negative um, number in your binomial, your signs are going to wind up being uh, negative, positive, negative, positive. So um, just watch out for that. So now we can go ahead and do our multiplication and really get the final answer. So this term is just x to the fourth power. So we'll just write that down. Now here, if I do this multiplication, 4 times negative 5, uh, well, that's negative 20. So I'm going to have negative 20 and then my x to the third power. Now here I've got 6 times 25. Okay, so 6 times 25, that's 150. So I'm going to have 150 x squared. And here I have 4 times negative 125. Okay, that's negative 500. Okay, so I will have minus 500x. 
And then, of course, on the end, just 1 times 625 is simply 625. So this will be the standard form expanded binomial. All right, I hope this video was helpful to you. I will see you on the next video where we will talk about factoring. Okay, in the next video, we'll be factoring the sum of two cubes, and this looks like a little grouping, GCF, and the difference of two squares. All right, so I'll see you on the next video, you guys.